Coronation Street is in half an hour after a revealing and intriguing episode of Emmerdale. sleeping in. I don't think so. Blasted helicopter. Shouldn't be allowed, that sort of thing. I shall be writing to the airport, naturally. It's already left for court. Expecting the verdict today, aren't we? That's right. Well, by all accounts, things are looking pretty bleak for Kim and Steve. Why did you hear that? Well, just the general opinion in the village, so I gather. Well, it's a good job that none of them are on the jury, then, isn't it? Excuse me. Right, what do you reckon? This one or this one? Is it a wedding or a funeral? It's the last day of the trial, you fool. Guilty or not guilty? You reckon Kim's going to get off? Well, I don't know. I just hope that Steve gets his comeuppance after what he did to Cathy. Hey, shouldn't you be at work? Too cold to go out. I'll catch up on my paperwork. Well, why don't you come to court? Show Kim you will in. I'd like to, Betty Lou, but I can't. I... I won't know where to put myself when it's all over. <laughs> Charlie wants to go for a walk. Terry will take him when he wakes up. Seth. <coughs> oh. Right. Fingers crossed. Place wouldn't be saying we are, Kim. <coughs> Seth. Get this dog walked now. What do you think I'm doing? I know that that one I said. All right, Charlie, in a minute. Finishing my tea first. I'm really glad that you came back this morning. I couldn't leave it like that between us. The way I reacted was unforgivable. Let's not mention it again. Nothing like it will ever happen again, I swear. <laughs> You look terrible, if you don't mind me saying. I haven't slept at all. Where did you go? Uh, I, I just walked, really. Trying to work out what made me behave like that. I, I didn't mean to make you feel small. It wasn't really you I was angry with. No? It brought back memories of my wife. I loved her very much, but we had a difficult time for a while. Listen, if you don't want to talk about it... It got out of control. She bicker with me in front of friends and pick silly rows. I wasn't trying to pick a row. Then I realised she was just insecure about my feelings for her. Listen, if you want to slow things down, I'll, I'll understand. Well, that's the last thing I want. It's made me realise how important you are to me. I meant what I said. I want us to live together. Must have done us some good. We'll see. 
Are you saying you think we've lost? I'm saying that whatever happens, there's still hope. We have excellent grounds for an appeal. That, Bertie. This is well to be prepared for the worst. As long as Kim goes down with me, I think I can face anything. Don't worry. Now, are you sure you should be here, Lord? No. But I couldn't stay away. This is great, isn't it? That's all someone selling popcorn to be back in the pictures. Why? Where's Kim? Isn't she here? Well, she was supposed to come in with you. Well, she wasn't at the house. I thought she made her own way in. <sighs> that must be it. We'll give her a few minutes before we start to worry, shall we? Nobody home. Suits me. Come on, Charlie. We'll go and put his feet up. This way, Charlie. Where the hell is she? So she if you tell she'll be. She would have found him. What do you reckon's going on, Zoe? I've no idea, Betty. Well, where's Kim, then? I thought she'd normally come in with you. She decided to make her own way in today. Looks as though she's got lost, then, doesn't it? If you ask me, she's done a bunk. No one did ask you, Butch. No, she don't want to face the music, does she? Don't be ridiculous. It would certainly explain why she hasn't turned up. She's innocent. What possible reason would she have to run away? All stand! Right. Your Honour, might I have a word? All right. Your Honour, I'm afraid Mrs. Marchant has yet to arrive in court. Do we know why this is? At the present moment, no, Your Honour. Your Honour, given the stage of the trial, there's every likelihood that she's jumped bail. Or she just might be stuck in traffic. Your Honour, may I suggest that this might be an appropriate moment to issue an entry warrant to her house? Mr. Derbyshire? Is that not a little drastic, Your Honour? <sighs> Detective Inspector Spaulding, would you step forward, please? She's gone. I don't believe it. Pictures than a runner. Come on, Jack. We need to get going. Where? We're going to the supermarket, remember? Oh, I can't wait till tomorrow. I've got to get this finished. No, there's practically nothing left in the house, and I need you to help carrying things. Sarah? I'll come with you. Oh, oh thanks, but. Uh... Don't mind, I'm doing that. No, you go on, Ned. I can finish off here. I'm sure Sarah would be glad of the company. Yeah, excellent. I'll speak to you later. Mr. Tate? Mr. Tate? Oh, come on, Charlie. If you can take a day off without telling us, we can... What you got there, Charlie? Come on, leave it. Leave it, boy. Oh, my God. What do you think they're talking about? 
what to do about Kim not being here, I suppose. We'll be putting out an APB, watching the ports and that. She won't get far. Do you think she's really trying to make a run for it? After your evidence, she's not going to sit around waiting to go to prison. It can't be that easy, surely. She just decided to take off and get away with everything. She won't get past the Rosers at the airport. Don't you worry, love. She may have done all the planning, but he's the one that hit you with the horse box. And he's not going anywhere. You heard from Chris at all today? No. I've been trying to ring him and there's no reply. And so? Well, I just thought he would be here for this. To be honest, it's not Chris's absence I'm worried about. You don't think he could have run off with Kim, do you? That would be a turn up for the books. What makes you think she's run off? Well, I don't see her here. I'm going to go and call on him. Silence in court. In view of the continued absence of the co-defendant, whilst inquiries are made as to her whereabouts, this court will adjourn until two o'clock. All stand. Is supporting the enemy, is this? I mean, how's the local small food producer gonna survive if you're gonna sell out and come to the supermarket, eh? Ned, will you just... just open the boot for me? You see, the big chains, they set the prices for folks like us, which means they either drive you out of business or... It is, isn't it? You have to sell with profit margin, vanish into nothing. Ned Glover. I'm sorry, love, do I know you? Oh, yes. It's Dawn. Don Wilkins. Blimey, Ned, I never thought I'd see you again. Chris! Chris! He's alive. Ned. I found him out here. The rain has been here for hours. What the hell's happened it, to him? He took a blow on Ed. Somebody left him. <gasps> left him for dead. I'm his sister. Okay, you can get him now. <laughs> Chris, it's me, Zoe. It's all right. Everything's going to be all right. This... You... Let's stop. This... Kim... Kim... Do this to me. I wasn't sure if it was you. I don't believe it. Where you been hiding all this time, eh? Oh, Fred's work took us down south for a bit, you know? How long's it been? 25, 30 years? Don't. And Fred, how does the old beggar? I'd love to see him. He died, Ned, about six months ago. It's one of the reasons I came home. I'm sorry, love. It's all right, you weren't to know. I've been coming home for a while. Is this Sherum? I, oh, no, this is Sarah, the boss's wife. Hello. Hello. This is Dawn. Me and her husband go way back. Well, we did. I was uh, wondering if you fancied a cup of tea in the cafe, both of you. Yeah, why not? Uh, no, I have to get back. We can't leave it all to Jack. Yeah, right. Uh, sorry, Dawn, another time, eh? Yeah. Hey, look, uh, Dawn, it's been great to see you. Man, I'm sorry about your news. You're looking well, Ned. I'm working at uh, Sugar's family site outside Emmerdale, you know, if you pass in. OK. So, uh, I'll see you, Dawn. We found her car at home farm, Your Honour, but there was no sign of Mrs. Marchant. We put out an all ports. She won't get out of the country now. If she hasn't gone already. Will you be looking for another adjournment, Mr. Derbyshire? I'd be rather inclined to hear the verdicts on both defendants now, Your Honour. You sure? Mm -hmm. Bring in the jury. What's going on? I'm afraid it appears she's jump bailed. <laughs> I knew it. And why the hell was she going to bail in the first place? So what happens now? When we hear the verdicts in her absence. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Steve. Listen, she set the whole thing up and I'm sat here being stitched up while she gets away scot-free. She won't get far. She'll be in South America by now. 
She was spending my money while I rot in jail for her mistakes. Don't panic. This could all work in your favor. You've played straight all along while she's looking guilty as sin. The judge will take this all into account. Would the foreman of the jury please stand? Have you reached a verdict on which you are all agreed for all charges against the defendants? We have. To the charge of theft, do you find the defendant, Kim Marchant, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. To the charge of attempting to obtain money by deception, do you find the defendant, Kim Marchant, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. To the charge of attempted murder, do you find the defendant, Stephen Marchant, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Mrs. Glover, there's a telephone call for you. It's urgent. Rachel. Oh, hi. Is it a bad time? No, no. So uh, what do you say? Uh, I'll move in all my stuff and we'll give it a go, eh? Look, Graham, you're not just saying this to make up for our row, are you? No. It's just I don't want to rock the boat. I mean, your place is so close to mine. We practically live together already. It's not enough for me anymore. I, I want us to live together all the time. <sighs> don't tell me you're getting cold feet. No, no. I just don't want to push you into anything that you, uh, that you might regret. <sighs> Rachel, you're the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. And <sighs> No matter how hard you try it, I'm not going to let you slip through my fingers. Unless you want to, of course. Let's go for it. I'll help you move your stuff in. <laughs> she could have killed him. I think that might have been the idea. But why? I don't understand. He tried to tell you what she was like. You wouldn't listen to him. I had no idea. She's been such a friend to me. Well, she needed you. God, I've been so stupid. Why hasn't the doctor been out yet? Kim used me from the word go. I supplied her alibi. I stood by when everyone else thought she was guilty. Where is he? Can I see him? You can't go in. The doctors are with him. How bad is it? We just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up, please, Mr. Marchant. As to the charges of theft and attempting to obtain money by deception, I have taken into account your guilty plea and your cooperation with the police, and I sentence you to 12 months for each charge. As to the more serious charge of attempted murder, I feel that I must make an example in such a case, and I'm sentencing you to 10 years. All sentences to run concurrently. What? 10 years? <laughs> You're mad. I didn't see her. I couldn't stop. There was nothing I could do. Mr. Marchant, you are in contempt of court. 10 years? This isn't justice. Kim's the one to blame for this and she's getting away with it. Take him down. You've got the wrong person. Kim should be going to prison, not me. Get off! Find her! Find the bitch! Let me go! Let me find her! Take him down. Come. Well, come on, Ned. You've got to pull us out of our misery. She an old flame, or what? I might have set her out for a bit before my mate Fred nicked her from me. Well, where do you know him from, then? You still out on his dad's farm when we were kids. And I married Jan, and, well, we all lost touch, you know how it is. Well, she seemed very pleased to see you. I hope at least you got a number. Look, what is this? I ain't seen it for about 30 years. Yeah, all right, Ned. Didn't mean anything by it. Fred was a mate, and it's all come as a bit of a shock. I wouldn't finish them sheep pens off. <laughs> I feel responsible. Oh, don't be stupid. 
If I hadn't spoken up in court, Kim would never have felt the need to run. So it's better if you keep your mouth shut and she just gets away with everything. She has got away with everything. Well, there's plenty you could have done to stop it. Oh, come on, Laura, this isn't doing any good. No. No. All that matters is that Chris recovers. It's nice to know you feel so strongly about someone you work with. Hi. How is he? He seems to have come through the critical period. He's suffering from bad concussion and blood loss. But he's conscious, and that's a good sign. Well, can I see him? I don't see why not. One at a time. You should have let me take you straight to the hospital. No, no, we'll go tomorrow. I don't want to get in Kathy's way. I feel bad enough about what she's been through already. I mean, she came and tried to apologise, but I wouldn't have it. It's not too late, is it? Oh, no, I don't suppose so. So go and get things sorted. We can't afford to be careless with our friends. Yeah, you're right. I would prefer it if we were talking again. Good. That's settled then. He stood there. You should have seen his face. And then... White wine and a pint, please. Oi. Shh! And then, quick as a flash, Steve clobbered the security guard and made a dash for the door. And if I hadn't have put my foot out to trip him Betty, up... Betty! You're forgetting, love. Some of us were there. Yeah. Well, I would have done if I'd have been nearer. Ten years, though. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. After what he did to Cathy, he was lucky he went strung up. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to imply this. So what do you think happened to Chris? I found him up at Dawn Farm. A blow head, inches from death. Mm -hmm. Oh, Seth saved his life. He had to give him mouth to mouth. <laughs> Shut up, woman. She don't know what she's talking about. Where do they think Kim's got to now? Well, according to the constable who was filling me in like, she caught a helicopter to Acapulco. An helicopter? <laughs> An helicopter won't get all the way to Acapulco, would he, Dad? Well, it depends, son. Depends. What on? The wind. She must have had it planned all along in case things went wrong. Ah, you've got to hand it to her. Must have cost a packet. Yeah, I know he can do it. won't be her money. I dread to think what'll happen when the law catches up with her. The law? Must be joking. It's never been a match for Kim Chait. She the last of that woman round here. Good luck to her, that's what I say. What? What have I said? Chris, I'm so sorry. Don't be. I had no idea. Where is she? They got her? No, not yet. There's no trace of her or James. She's one, Zoe. She's destroyed me. And now she's going to get away. Chris. How can I carry on knowing she's got everything? Wish to God she had killed me. I really do. It's all my fault. It warned me about Kim and I wouldn't listen it. Will the Duckworths end up homeless as well as jobless? Stay with us and find out in Coronation Street. <laughs>